All right, so now we've done some model form stuff. It's time to try out another way of doing forms. You don't have to use model form to do forms. You can have just a blank raw form. It doesn't have to be based off of a model. It can be on its own. So that's actually what we're gonna do now. And it's just a regular old form and we're gonna use it as a contact form. Now, this doesn't really fall in the lines of a newsletter. You would have a full on if I were going to do a contact form whatsoever on any project, I would have an app for contacting and have models and I want to save all that stuff. But since we've already talked about those things, we're not going to do that in this one just because I just want to show the concept to you so you understand it. Um, because forms, again, like I said in the last one, are very important and very useful. So in this one, I'll just add a new class here of contact form and it's going to be forms.form. So it's just inheriting from a regular form. Again, no model form, so we don't need a model. And now we can just set the fields explicitly as to what we want. So let's just say full name, and it's forms.char field. So this is a character field, just like what we've seen in models, right? And then we'll just say email equals to forms.email field. And we could say message equals to forms.char field as well. Um, so these ones are all gonna be required. I'm not gonna go into too much of the details as far as how to update and edit these. You can look at the documentation on all of those. More importantly is how we would actually use this contact form. So this one where I can also set up a new view for it. So let's go into our views. And inside of forms or inside of this import here, we wanna add in contact form. All right, so just like what we did with home, I'm gonna do something very similar. Uh, and I'm just gonna put it right below home. And I'll call it define, let's, I'm gonna add some space so we can see everything, all right. And I'll define it as contact. And it's taking in a request, it's gonna return render request. And I'll use a standard HTML template for forms, call it forms.html and context will be a context variable that we'll have to add in. So context equals to just an empty dictionary for now. And just like what we did up here is we'll have a form. So form for us is contact form. And just like what we did before, we're gonna request dot post or none. So this is getting that post data or none. And then we will add this form into this context. So form is equal to form. Perfect, okay, so now we've got our view pretty much set up so we can at least render it. So let's quickly make a few other things. We're gonna make the HTML template and then we need a URL to actually go to this contact. So inside of our templates, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna save this as forms.html. All right, so this is actually showing an HTML template. I'm going to go ahead and copy the form itself from the other one. So here's the form itself. All right, so now I'll just hit change the value to being submit. Okay, so now we've got a form, we have the HTML document, and it's all set up. So all this stuff's working great. Now we just need to set up our URL for the routing of it. The easy way to do it is to copy the URL right above, copy that and paste below, and just add contact here, add a trailing slash, and the views is contact, and the URL name, we'll call it contact as well. You don't have to worry about that at this point, but there we go. So now we have a actual URL for contact. So all of what I just did was review. So if it, none of it made sense, definitely go back and rewatch how we did the last few videos on setting up this view. Um, but now that we've got this contact form, let's go ahead and take a look at it in our project. And we'll just go to contact with a trailing slash. And there's our form actually rendering. If I hit submit, notice all these fields are required. Uh, so they're actually showing up. So going into our form, we could add in to our first one, required equals to false, uh, full name. And we can run that form again. And now full name is not saying required, right? So that's good. That's something we wanna see. Um, so now how do we use this? Um, well, going back to form is valid, we wanna validate our form. So if form dot is valid, well, we can't do the same thing that we did before. We're not saving it because it's not a model form. If it's a model form, we would have the ability to save it right off the bat. 
but this is just data that's coming through. So now what we wanna do is actually get that data. So all I'll do here is I'll print the form um, and we'll see what happens when I actually print the form and more specifically, the cleaned data from the form. Okay, cool, so let's try that out. And I'll say email, I'll say abc at gmail.eu, doesn't really matter, and message will say hello there. Hit submit, all right, nothing seems, errors are gone and all that. But we see this clean data, cool, so that's actually coming through. And we can test that it's clean data, so abc, we can just have it, our email as just abc, and hit submit. And again, it's giving us that error of like, make sure this is an email. A slightly different error than what we saw before, but it's still the same error. So I'll say at gmail.com, go ahead and submit it. Cool, looks like it's printing out here. Great, so that's working. Um, and that's a way to actually see this data. So one thing that I do might want, I might want to actually add that same validator to my form that I did before, this clean email validator. Well, it's really easy. We can copy, literally copy the exact same one and paste it above and make sure all your spacing is correct as according to Python. And let's go back into this contact and we'll say abc at gmail.com and say hello there and hit submit. Ah, please enter a valid edu email address. Cool, so validation still works here. Um, we don't need that obviously, so I'm gonna delete it, um, especially not for a contact form, that doesn't make any sense. So now that we've got the validators working, we can now kind of think about how we might want to do this. Without going and creating a model and doing all this stuff, you might want to actually create a model to actually save this data, but what we're going to do is just print it out. So the form valid, I'm first off going to say email equals to form.cleanedata.get and email. And then we can go through all of the email stuff here and we'll say message equals to message and full name is the last one and full name and there we go and now we can print out we'll print out each one of these so we'll print out email message full name print those out do a quick refresh confirm the form submission and now it's printing out all three of those things. Now, of course, we don't have a full name. So if I said Justin as my full name, hit submit, now it's gonna print that out too. So now we can do all sorts of things with this data, right? So this is a way to do a uh, like more of a custom form that's not reliant on a model of any kind. And again, there's all kinds of fields you can do here. Um, there's also things called widgets. So if you wanted a text area in this message, you could use what's called a widget. So you can look up form widgets for something like that. Uh, it's not something we'll get into at this point, but there's all kinds of things that you can do with these forms. Another thing that you might consider doing is instead of explicitly setting these like this, we could say for key value in form.cleaned data, print key value, all right? So we can set this out and go ahead and refresh there, run that through. Uh, too many values to unpack. So we wanna do print for key in form. And there we go, submit it. So we can actually see all the different keys. And then from there, we could say, uh, we can print the form.cleanedata.get uh, the key. And this would actually give us the key values. So we go ahead and submit it again. And there it goes. So that's a way, if you had a lot of fields in here, this would be a way to iterate through those fields uh, just like that. It's, it's fairly straightforward and fairly easy to do. Um, and if you actually wanted to do key and value, you would simply add dot iter items and that will iterate the items in a easier form to work with so that we could do key and value. And now you could do print key and value and then we could just run through all of these. So let's go back into Chrome, submit the form or refresh it. And this will allow us to actually go through all the data in a way that makes it a little bit easier on us. Cool, so um, that is using a custom form. Um, either method works. So like in a contact form, this is perfectly okay. You don't actually have to iterate through each one and try and figure out all that stuff um, because 
if you're doing a contact form, you might want to send an email uh, from here. So in the next one, we'll actually set up our site to send an email or um, to, so this contact form actually does work. And then that send email you'd be able to use um, also, if the newsletter signed up, you can send an email to that newsletter um, recipient thanking them or confirming their email. Although we're not going to do the confirming email part, we're just really going to be doing um, the actual sending of email using a standard service like Gmail. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.